What's up, Mentors Collective? On this episode, I've got a super special guest for you and a good friend of mine. Uh, we just got introduced recently, and she is a social media superstar, also runs a kick-ass podcast that I've been checking out. Uh, so founder and creator of Not, Not a Basic Blonde, fashion and lifestyle blog dedicated to inspiring young women to create an extraordinary lifestyle, and she's got a massive following. Uh, she's also the author of Cutie the Unicorn, It's Okay to Be Different. Uh, super excited to talk about the book as well. She's a Russian model. Uh, she's led a really impressive 15-year career in fashion and runway in Atlanta and overseas. And now she's here crushing it on social media and podcast life. Uh, she's got an astounding number of followers, over 500,000 on Instagram alone. She's got a massive podcast audience. You can probably see her on with Ed Milet and other massive names. So super excited to talk uh, on this episode specifically about social media and business. Uh, with that being said, uh, welcome. Welcome. Olya, I'm not going to try the last name. <laughs> thank you for coming on the show and, and, and talking to the audience about social media. How's it going? Yeah, thank you so much for inviting. I'm so excited to share all my experience and everything I can. Yeah, and thanks again. Uh, just let's let's just try this. What is the last name? How do you pronounce it? And for those of you who are watching this, you can probably see it. N o v o z h y l o v a. How, how do you how do you say it? It's Novozhilova. Love it. Uh, so you're originally from Russia. Yeah. When did you come here? I've been here uh, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, and I guess you came over for modeling? Yeah, I started modeling when I was 13, and I went to modeling school there as well, and done some modeling work there. And when I came here, I was 17, so I kind of continued everything, but I didn't do it full time at first because my parents were so hard on me, they wanted me to get education so i had to go to school i went to georgia state i graduated with bba in managerial sciences and i had a career for nine years of uh, it project manager and i used to manage large-scale projects and I used to work for nationwide very famous telecom companies and it companies and after i told myself that I couldn't do it anymore, so I kind of stopped my IT world and I started modeling full-time and blogging full-time and everything I do now. Uh, well, it's an amazing story. Came came over here 15 years ago for modeling, got into IT for a long time, nine years, that's crazy. And then I guess decided, you know, enough's enough, this isn't my passion, and decided to try and do what you loved. And now you've made a, a career out of it. So for everyone listening, I mean, that that's an amazing story. and. Uh, congratulations to you, and I, I commend you for, for what you've done. Thank you. Of course. So, so talk to me a little bit about that transformation into making this a full-time career, especially with social media. I mean, you've had massive success with social media. How many followers do you have uh, across all of your platforms? Well, across all the platforms, probably close to 900, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't count across all of my platforms, mainly on Instagram, 600, something, 630, something. But 900,000 across all of your platforms? I think so, yeah. Roughly. Crazy. How, I guess, in an open-ended question, how did that begin? And how did you really scale that to a number like 900,000? I mean, that's that's just wild. So it kind of began very sudden because the universe pushed me. So I had my contract finished when I was doing my IT work. And I started blogging and I just kind of grew fast because I started posting content and brands became so interested they started offering me partnerships and I kind of grew my media kit pretty fast so then it's like kind of snowballed into bigger and bigger brands and like more and more partnerships so then my following started growing as well I've done a lot of giveaways too and I've done a lot of content and I'm very consistent on it. So that helps to grow your following. So, yeah, so I guess consistency is key for everyone, you know, watching now, yeah. everyone starts at zero followers. It doesn't happen overnight. How long has it been? So like, when did, when did you first start trying to grow the social media channels? Well, I opened it a long time ago, but actually start actively doing it probably 2017 end of 2017. Okay, so only about three, four years. Actually, not, not as long as I, I expected. So you've amassed quite a following pretty quickly. and I, I, Yeah, well, I put a lot of time into it. That's the key. <laughs> yeah, so, so talk to me about how you actually spend that time growing your account. Like, Do you do content every day? 
do you have one day a week yeah. where you go out and do content? Do you have a photographer? Talk to me a little bit about your content schedule. Sure. So I kind of batch my content. So I usually do like, it depends on partnership schedule as well. Like who I have aligned with and like which brands. So I kind of have schedule and I have my normal brands that I work with usually on a regular basis, like Revolve, Pretty Little Thing, Fashion Nova and others. So those I work monthly and I know when they kind of send me everything. So I kind of plan and I batch my content usually do a few outfits at a time for the photo shoots and then I just have enough pictures for like two weeks or so and then I just go from there and I plan of course my outfits I plan my photo shoots I plan what to order from brands what kind of clothes so then I actually so it matches my brand and it matches my personality and I go from there kind of yeah I do have my photographer I have a couple photographers and I do it myself sometimes too, with tripod. <laughs> so. Uh, so awesome. You, you batch your content. I, that, that's what I used to do as well. Back when I was uh, an influencer, those days are a little bit behind me, uh, but it was fun. I used to love content days going out with me and my friend and a couple cell phones and <laughs> walking around New York city and getting content. Uh, so your photographers, uh, do you pay them? How did you find them? Well, I found them through my friends and just my kind of, I'm very picky. So I added my pictures myself still. And my photographers are kind of like already know me and, but I found them through mutual friends. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, do they just do it for free to build their portfolio and work with people like you who have massive followings or do you pay? No, we have our own like agreements and work agreements. So gotcha. Understood. Uh, so very cool. Batching the content. I, I'm sure you've had a lot of these long-term partnerships where you know you're you're getting income every month. You're getting new outfits all the time. That's a ton of fun. Uh, out of yeah, but you know, in influencer world, it's very important to understand that you're not gonna get paid right away. Which, if you're lucky enough, you will. I mean, I did maybe in six first six months, but like it takes time to build your following, to build your page, to build your brand. And for brands kind of know you build relationships too. So that's all like, you know, some people give up on it so fast, not even thinking that, oh, it doesn't bring any money, but you still have to be consistent and you still have to be on it. So it will bring you money one day, but just like, remember, keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. And a lot of people ask me that, that question too, like, when can I monetize? Like how much should I charge based on my following? And to who? So that that's actually a good topic I'd like to talk about for a few minutes. Uh, at how many followers did you start to ask for money? And, you know, how, how much money is a good amount to ask at a, at a certain level? Well, it totally depends on the brand. It totally depends on the guidelines of the partnership agreement. It totally depends on requirements because sometimes you might spend more time, Some like you might have to rent a hotel room to provide the content they want. So that all expenses you to count, count towards whatever price, you know, is for the partnership. So you can really set the price. It used to be a formula by you multiply by number of followers, number of likes, blah, blah, but it doesn't work like that anymore. So it's very specific to every partnership. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense too. Especially your your category makes a lot uh, is is de determines a lot of stuff too. Like for me as a medical doctor, I had a lot of companies approaching me to do like endorsements for medical products, and I made the mistake of doing them a couple of times. But they paid me a, a lot more than they would probably pay like a fitness or a fashion influencer, uh, just based on their category and their followers and you know the, the cost of their product. So that's an important thing to take into account as well. But you know, like you said, when when I first started and I was you know five to 20,000 followers. A lot of the collaborations I was doing was for free. And the the value of the product was was a, a factor too. Like my, my current bed is from Lowell. It's a $2,000 bed. They sent me the bed. I did a couple of videos for them. They didn't pay me anything, but I wanted that bed. <laughs> and I was willing to, to do it for free as well. So that, that helped. Uh, well, right now, it's happening that so many brands love micro influencers. They love influencers with small following because it's way, they have to spend way less for it. And sometimes they don't have budget for 
large influencers like myself and others so they would rather work with influencers who have like 2000 followers or something so yeah. now it doesn't matter how many followers you have you can monetize it right away it's true that that's our company too we're we're looking for micro influencers now sub 10,000 because and, and you you can attest to this 3 years ago influencer marketing was cheap uh, I, I could get influencers for my business for less than $100 in most cases, sometimes for free. Now it is everybody knows about influencer marketing. Every company wants to use influencer marketing. And influencers don't always know what they're worth and usually think they're worth more than they are, especially with organic reach and stuff on Instagram net down now. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting uh, environment for influencer marketing for sure. Yeah. Uh, so that that's super valuable for everybody to know. So th so thank you for that. Let's let's talk for a second about some Instagram growth tactics that you've used. I know you said the giveaways were good. You know, tag a friend and have the chance to win X, Y, and Z. Uh, any yeah. anything else that you've done to see a lot of success with? Have you done any cross promotions with other girls with similar audiences? Talk to me about some of the growth tactics you've used. So I'm actually doing a course right now. I'm creating the course. Probably come out at the end of March on how to monetize and grow your Instagram. So I'm sharing lots of secrets there, but I can share a few. Give us a preview yeah, and uh, may maybe I'll, we'll, we'll put it up yeah. for the audience who's interested. Yeah, so definitely cross promotion helps creating videos and showing yourself on stories every day. Giveaways is a good thing too, because giveaways is the fast way to grow and even people say well yeah you get followers but they're not really active well people who don't like your account they will not stay with you after giveaway people who do like your account if you keep posting content they will love you i mean <laughs> they will love you and stay with you anyway so it's it's a great way to do it and i've done it and i have nothing against it even though some people say they don't like it but it worked for me it worked for others and it's a great way to do it too and for those who are like small influencers sometimes they want to partner with a brand but brand doesn't want to pay them you can offer them to do the giveaway on your page in this way you will grow your following you will grow your following and the brand will grow your following and you will build a relationship with the brand and you will get more followers and of course more activity on your account as well more reach and also i post mainly videos because they have higher reach and they have more impressions and I even turn my photos into videos that's my secret because people ask me why you always post photo but it's kind of video yeah that's why because I have like over 4 million impressions a week and that's because I post videos and they usually get more reach than just picture and I mean, now everybody's saying about reels, but reels are tricky and kind of great. But at the same time, some people find it difficult to comment on it. And some people still kind of don't like it for some reason, because on the reels, you get likes and views. Yes. But as far as reach, I don't know if they go as far as videos. Yeah, I think a lot of people aren't really sitting in their Instagram reels going through content like they are on their, their normal feed. So I, I would agree with you there. Uh, super interesting tactic, turning your regular pictures into little videos. I, I love that. What do you use to do that? Is there any special tool that you use to quickly transform them? Yes, I use an app and I figured it out myself. So nobody really does it at all. I haven't seen anybody doing it. But I love Sparkle, so I use Sparkle Cam app. <laughs> okay, interesting. It sounds a little girly, but I might give it a try too. That's a that's a good tip. And I guess a little preview for your course as well. When when is that a, a course coming out? Do you have a date for release? It's coming out in March. We we still try to set up the date. Okay, awesome. Let me know when it does. We'll definitely push it out to our audience and see if uh, anyone's interested. Maybe you can give us a coupon code too. That'd be fun. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Are, are you active on any other platforms except for Instagram? Uh, obviously, the the landscape yeah. of social media has been changing. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. I started doing TikTok and so many brands love TikTok. I don't know. They, they still love it because different algorithm there and some reach there too. So I had repeat repeating partnerships with some brands. They kept, kept loving it and they kept asking me to do it. So I'm on TikTok, but like 
I stopped being active on it when everybody passed the rumor that it's going to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> so then I stopped pouring my energy into it. But I'm active on Instagram all the time. And what else? Clubhouse here and there. What else? Well, Facebook. I don't use Facebook, honestly. I don't use Facebook either. <laughs> Facebook's good. Instagram, my main platform. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's scary. I mean, the organic reach on Instagram is starting to plummet, and you got to go where the attention is. And TikTok is an interesting style of content that you have to create, very different from Instagram. And it can be tough, especially to be creative when you're not just like sitting there dancing. Uh, I don't know yeah. what your thing is. Maybe you are a dancer, so that helps. Uh, but not me. I, I, I have a hard time dancing. Uh, so TikTok's been hard to make the move to. Uh, Instagram, I think, is now uh, like a more of a business card than anything else. But I still spend most the secret is, like to grow your email list. When you have your email email list, it doesn't matter what platform you have because you will have your customers and whatever followers, whatever yep. your fans. So love that. How how do you get people uh, from your followers on your social media into your email list? Do you have a strategy for that? I have a blog, but also you have to give people something interesting that would be like very excited about like if you create courses you have to give some freebie that they will be wanting to give you email so they can actually check out what's new or if you're just an influencer or if you're just doing something fun you have your brand you just have to like tell people that you will give them special updates or special like maybe giveaways or special bonuses or special something special that they will not see every day on your platform and it's only for like special group so then they want to give you email yep i'm with you there uh you know we, we collect emails through our our social media accounts too and a lot of like fun little dm tricks as well uh so awesome i know mm -hmm. your computer's probably on the verge of dying so i'm going to wrap this up and let you give your top tips for anyone who wants to grow their instagram account Give me three of your, your best hitting pieces of advice. Well, being yourself and staying true to yourself and showing your face a lot on camera and posting as many videos as you can. Also sharing personal stories. I don't share as many because I kind of keep it, kind of keep it. I mean, you can share whatever you're comfortable sharing. So I do share a lot what I'm comfortable with sharing, but I don't share a lot of personal stuff because it's kind of my blog, my brand, but not too much about my personal life. So I kind of keep it separate, but some people do share their personal life a lot. They share their husbands, kids, pets, and people love that. So that's the main thing that people love and that sort of attracts people because when you share your story, people can relate to it and they get attached to you and then they wait for your content every day. What are you going to talk about today? I want to see it. And then they follow you. They stay with you. And of course, you have to keep them exciting. You have to come up with new things all the time. And I don't know, come up. It depends on the brand, depends what you actually do on social media. Totally depends on your strategy. but. Keeping people excited, coming up with new things all the time. It's kind of keeps, helps your account to grow. And of course, you can hire social media manager if you want to really like kind of speed up your game too. That helps too. And you can participate in giveaways. Main thing is collaborations and collaborate. Like do not hesitate to DM people on Instagram to build a relationship like we DM, you know, and like, you know, kind of just hi, just, I mean, just send a DM, just say hi, like, what's up? I just want to be a friend. Like, let's just support each other. And that helps a lot too. Yeah. Love everything that you said. Couldn't agree more. And especially about being authentic and creating a connection with your followers, being as personal as possible. And I, I the people that I follow who I actually watch their stories and interact with their posts, they're all people who do exactly that. Uh, so thank you. Awesome pieces of advice. Uh, for those of you who are listening who want to connect with Olya, uh, where can they find you and what's your what's your call to action? Sure. So my Instagram is notbasicblonde underscore. My podcast is available on all the major 
podcast platforms, it's not Basic Blonde Podcast, and Instagram for it is NBB Podcast, and my blog is notbasicblonde.com. All right, love it, and I'll drop all of your links in the caption for anyone who's looking, and for everyone listening, I hope you loved this this uh, episode. Uh, if you did, feel free to connect with Olya. Feel free to subscribe and drop a five star review, and I'll see you all next time. And Olya, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks so much for inviting me. All right, just stop.